I'm Mike Studd. Um, this man right here is Marcus Stroman. I know him as M. Stro. This guy was, I want to say, the last time I ever took a made a decision to actually get down and catch somebody for a bullpen, it was this guy. <laughs> he was. I just had TJ. When was what year was this? Oh nine. Oh nine. Oh nine. <clears throat> just had TJ. I was the man at that point. I was, you know what I mean? I was, it was one of those times where I was like, you know what? I'm just going to come back to it harder. It yep. felt great. Um, rehab was going amazing. So I'm, this kid comes in and supposedly throws hard. <laughs> he gets there. He's the smallest guy on the team by far. I think. Actually, no, we had some dude. Oh, yeah. Joe. Joe. Peta, Peta, Joe. Yo. What's his name? Joe yes, Petavolano. Joe Petavolano. What's up, buddy? If he's watching. A little lefty. When it, rockets. Honestly, was I think, what was he, 5'5", five, 5'6"? Five, five, yeah, he was. Shortest guy in the whole ACC, I think. He was ACMH for sure. He was. He was. But anyways, I'm like, there's no way this dude throws it. I'm an athlete. You know what I mean? I used to play <laughs> I used to play third in Rhode Island, so I'd be good. Yeah. And uh, I get down on my, I get down and the guy's throwing. I'm like, there's no gun. Obviously, it's just me. I'm No pads. <laughs> This guy's bringing 93, 94, <laughs> 93, 94, a little flag, sink. Flat ground. A little sink. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, it was the last, honestly, the last time like I ever would catch anyone as a bullpen. I would never take another bullpen on because it was 15 minutes. I think it lasted and it felt like Duke. six hours. 09 Duke. Was it 09? Oh, yeah. Nine. So I want to get a little more like kind of just talk about. Just things that you remember about growing up, um, moments in time where you felt like you figured out what, what you were going to be. You obviously, somebody who talks positive, manifests, you know what I mean? All those things you talk about. Um, but were, are there moments growing up that you could think of at all or just times in your life where it was kind of those, I'm on, this is my path, I'm ready to commit to this. Almost like... When I started in music, there was a, I can't put a, a moment in time, but I just remember, I remember where I was. And I just remember being like, I, I could do, I could do this. I, no one thinks I can do this, but I, I and it was in 2000, it was 2014. So I, I remember it before then it was, I never had the actual, I mean, I never even thought about it like that. And then it just kind of clicked for me. But I want to see like, as an athlete, it's a long journey to get to the big leagues, bro. You know, you you were a fast track guy. Yeah. Still, you understand the process. So just, I wanted to like dive into that with you. See, just see your kind of what if there was anything that stood out. I don't think it clicked to me. To be honest with you, I don't think it clicked until <clears throat> until 2015. Mm. Until after 15. So after where I came were back you? My ACL. Um, I think my whole life was kind of me like building, climbing. Mm -hmm. There was never a point in my life previously where I felt like I had arrived or I felt like mm. I had made it. My whole life, even even when I made it to the big, even when I got drafted, even when I made it to the big leagues, like I still felt when, that I had been climbing and that I hadn't proven myself yet. Right. I didn't feel like I had proven myself until <clears throat> when I came back from my ACL and I had a pretty good September and then pitched into the playoffs. After that, pretty good. Is an understatement? Yeah. <laughs> dealt, 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 dealt. Uh, but after that, and seeing all the adversity I came through that past year, 2015 was crazy for me, man. Right. Like, people don't, pe people really don't know. Like, there needs to be a movie or a book written about my 2015 year, like, straight Walk up. Up. Tell us a little bit. Um, we got time. And the only person that really knows is my best friend, Ryan, because he was with me, like, on the daily. Tear my ACL in March. Um, end up getting surgery, obviously, out for the year. Mm -hmm. nine to 12 months is like the minimum for ACL. Right. So tear my ACL, call my mom, call my dad. Had a moment. Call my mom back literally in the same no, room. No, you say had a moment. You mean just yeah, that was, feeling, I, feeling. Yeah, I broke down literally quick. I broke down for a second just because mm -hmm. I know how, how hard I worked yeah. for that season. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I wasn't going to be able to show everyone right. um, my work ethic and everything that I put into it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't gonna be there for my team, my family, my friends. Right. I feel like I was almost gonna let everyone down. So, had a quick moment, man. When I tell you a moment, it was a moment. Like I, I honestly never cry. I've cried a couple times like this, and when my grandma passed, are probably mm -hmm. the two times I, I've ever cried in my life. Feels good to cry. Yeah, it does. yeah, it does. It's it's uh, it's rejuvenating sometimes. Mm -hmm. But had so a that moment, last, man. That, that last what an hour? No, nah, man, feeling not like that. Even. Is it a night? Is it a? No, nah, I'm not kidding, man. I, I so I. 
we didn't know if I tore my ACL, so I got into the doctor's office. Right. It's me, my trainer, doctor. Pulls on my ACL. He goes, you tore your ACL. Like, right on the spot. He's like, we don't even need to do an MRI. He's like, if we do an MRI, it's just going to show up, but we'll still do an MRI. Right. So he told me that. He's like, you're out for the year. So, like, I was just like, all right, I just need a sec. So, like, I had, like, them just get out for a sec. Literally, I just I had, like, literally a moment, man. Probably, like, a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. And then right after that couple minutes, I called my mom. I called my dad. Told them. Called my best friend, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Then I sat there for a couple more minutes, and I was like, what the f- what, yeah. what am I going to do? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Call my mom back, man. Like in that moment, like a couple minutes later, I was like, "Hey, I want to go back to school. Let's get that rolling." Amazing. So she, so she literally that, that day she started calling all the people at Duke to get me enrolled in classes that I needed to finish my degree and it's amazing that whole process. So mm-hmm. best thing that ever happened to me, man. That I look back. So I ended up going back to Duke, finishing my degree, like overloading on classes. Ended up doing two a days for. I six remember days talking a week. to you. You were on a crazy schedule. Crazy wave, man. Crazy wave. You were on like a seven a.m. work, go rehab before class. Yeah. Then what class. were your classes at night? Yeah. So wake up, rehab early. Yeah. Straight to class. Straight back to rehab. Straight back to class. Come home. Foam roll. Like go through my 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 nighttime routine. Hmm. Bed. Six days a week, man. Sundays so, off. So. so can you we remember? put nine to 12 months in five months, right? So it's yeah. crazy. I mean, what you did, like, I remember being like, yeah, so I was acting like I wasn't surprised, yeah. but I mean, I was still like, holy shit, you know? Like, so I think it's too fast to say CO recovery ever. Yeah, probably will be. I guess what I wanted to ask about that more specifically is, do you remember how it really felt? Can you put yourself back when you're at Duke, were you actually enjoying it or were you like kind of miserable inside but kind of forcing yourself to be positive where you what was it no nah, man I, I i enjoyed it i enjoyed it I thoroughly honestly, like don't don't give me a political answer like you thoroughly you weren't I, you weren't I, doubting i thoroughly this. enjoyed the mentality part of it no man i came to terms and i was like I, I looked at it as another opportunity honestly i wanted to go back and finish my degree at some point mm-hmm. like that was something that i was honestly upset when i when i left to go play like I was like when am I gonna finish <clears throat> I was realistic with myself I was like if I have the career that I want to have I'm probably not gonna go back when I'm 40 years old right. you know what I mean so I looked at this as like a silver lining man I was like I'm be a, I'm gonna be able to go get my degree mm-hmm. yeah I'm gonna miss some time <coughs> but if I work like I know <laughs> need I some work. water I need <laughs> yeah. some fucking water I too I'm like... <laughs> yo Steve <laughs> Versace I'm gonna call I'm just gonna text him um, we need water bad this is just like first episode of oversight stuff. Just not not prepared at all. Yeah, um, it's quality material. Though. But yeah, let's. I mean, like, I kind of wanted to hear that answer because I'm a believe. I'm just such a huge believer in like omens. Yeah. Like I, if you knew me when I was when you knew me, like I wasn't. I didn't even think or talk about things like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've. I feel like we've grown so much yeah. through just these experiences. But now, like what you said, like. I have this tattoo, first tattoo I ever got is the date I had Tommy John. Mm-hmm. It's on my wrist. And I remember feeling I remember feeling like it was the worst day of my life. I was depressed at that time. Yeah. So to now look at it and be like, wow, I tattooed this on my wrist because it, it was actually the best day of my life. Yeah. And I would have never, if you told yeah, me that. I have my ACL, I have my ACL date on me too. Exactly. I, I really feel like people want to hear people care more about my lifestyle or like kind of how I look at things now, almost almost more than my music. I have this fan base that's just, a, they're just so connected because I think they care so much about this type of stuff. Like I get most of my fan mail or letters or anything or, you know, messages and emails are, they're looking for direction. The biggest thing that I try to tell these kids is like, bro, you really never know. Like mm. there's no way you can plan anything Mm -hmm. you could do you could go to bed every night because your mom tells you to and you can go to class and you could study and get a's and you could have your major and then all of a sudden something happens in your life and it was it's never an option again so like it's not to say don't have plans it's just to understand that even if it doesn't feel like it's part of your plan that doesn't mean it's part of your bigger plan Mm -hmm. maybe this is supposed to happen because your bigger plan is here yeah that goes with adaptability too. Like you gotta that's that's what it is. Yeah. It's what we're talking that's about. Nice. But it's just like, if once you let go of like, yo, 
wait, this is what I was supposed to do. This is how, what am I going to do now? Like, even with relationships or anything, like, mm -hmm. how could I live without that person? You just, bro, like, if, if you can look, take a step out of the moment and out of your emotions and just be like, wait, I'm going to actually believe that this happened for a reason. It might not even, it might not present itself for 10 years. At that point, you just kind of let go of caring so much about every event because you just kind of have to believe in the fact. I feel like most successful people believe that already at some standard, even if they don't really consciously like think about it in this way. You know what I mean? Like I think most people who are, fi are finding success understand that they can't hold on to any one event. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's that constant adaptability to be like, hey, I'm not gonna lose. That almost really just competitiveness across life. Like I think that's kind of what, like I said, I, th I, I wanted to talk to you about the most is just you seem very determined for somebody who is very established already at a young age, you seem very like determined to be just just to be at the forefront. You're not happy just being an incredible pitcher. You want to be at the forefront of kind of almost more like a brand. Like you're one of those athletes, especially in baseball. There's not many brands. You don't see it. There's there's superstar athletes that can monetize. You're building, it seems as though you're looking to build a brand and it's not, it's kind of like, it's almost as exciting as anything else. Obviously baseball is first, but you just seem to have that, I would say an equal passion or close to passion and just kind of growing yourself as a brand. And you know what I mean, I wanted, I wanted to touch on that because I'm a huge business guy as well. I want to actually, you know, obviously we could talk about some of the stuff we're doing, but it's like your bigger plans. What, what do you think? What makes you be this way? Is it the Duke education or is it just kind of who you are as a person and the goals you have? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a little combination of everything, man. Um, little combination of my upbringing. Definitely mixed with going to Duke, you know what I mean? You, you meet a lot of personalities. I'm definitely someone who just kind of follows, just kind of, I don't necessarily go in a particular direction. I'm always just trying to go forward, right? right. So. I just kind of let life take me, man, almost, and I just kind of ride it. So regardless of what happened, like, for instance, my ACL surgery, like, I wasn't going to feel sorry for myself, man, because at the end of the day, feeling sorry for yourself, what's that going to do? It's just right. going to make you feel miserable. So mm -hmm. I looked at it as an opportunity. I'm going to go back. I'm about to kill it. I'm going to come back early, and I'm going to have my Duke degree on the wall. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and by having my Duke degree, like, that puts me on a different level than, mm -hmm. than the rest of society or or even baseball players. You know right. what I mean? Just having having a degree from a s institution like Duke, which is pretty crazy. Right. Um, so I look at everything as an opportunity in my life, and I always just try to build and learn from it. Um, there's been so many different things I feel like that's happened on throughout my life where some people would take it and – let it affect them to the point where it would drive them into the ground. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing that, I took, I take it, I learn from it quickly, and I figure out how to let it make me get better. You know what I mean? I always try to keep a smile on my face, man. Like, life is extremely short. I've seen friends, I've seen family, I've seen a lot of people right. um, pass away, and I and I'm keep life in perspective always. I think that's the biggest thing, mm -hmm. man. There's no sense in, in feeling sorry for yourself because you never know. Um, when your time's gonna come, and that's how I, why I live every day like I do, man. Right. I'm a go-getter for sure. Like I'm always making moves. I'm always trying to do more. Right. My family's my my people. I want to give back to my family. So that's kind of where the motivation comes from. Mm -hmm. I know how much they have given me to get to where I'm at now. So right. I'm gonna do everything in my hustle to climb, to move forward, so that I can give them the life. So that's the motivation, man. Yeah. It's just it's not about anything. Like you have these things in your head, like yo. Man, if I'm in the big leagues, bro, I'm gonna be ha I'm good. That was that's un I can't believe I made it to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I did it. Mm -hmm. And it just never happens that way, yeah. bro. Like You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of this like just talking back about like what kids want to I try to tell kids that are just like they're 19, they're like, "Yo, man, I I can't I got nothing. I can't figure out what I'm supposed to be doing." Like It's all relative though. That's what people don't realize, right? Mm -hmm. So like you just said, I got to the big leagues. Some people would think of that as an end point. But mm. I got here, and now it's how do I become the best in the big leagues? Right. But it's all relative for wherever you're at in your life. It's no different than s someone who's on Wall Street selling stocks. You know what I mean? Obviously, right. there's that next level where they can get to. Mm -hmm. Or you're a salesperson. Or there's always that next level. So I feel like 
there should always be that climb. Obviously, there you have to have the right motives and goals that get you there. But I just think that there should always be that climb, no matter where you are in life. I, obviously, when you get to, th- there should never be an end point. Essentially, I know what you know you're what I mean. There should never be an end point because, like you said, some people's goal is to make it to the big leagues, and. I realized that was never my goal, honestly, was to make it to the big leagues. I just knew I was going to have an impact on this world. I did. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just always saw my mindset and my mentality was always different than right. people. And even when I went to Duke, I never said I was going to make it to the big leagues. I went to Duke which was with an open mind, like just trying to learn and just try to just take everything into my mind as possible. Right. And by doing so, I ended up playing baseball. But honestly, if I wasn't playing baseball, I would be completely fine. I would be doing something, you know what I mean, <laughs> in this life. That's wild. Like honestly, that's I. We've never had that conversation. That's wild. Cause I I don't I can't say the same. Yeah. I was one of those dudes like, and I wasn't like any highly touted guy like mm-hmm. on a grand, sc- you know. I was the best guy in Rhode Island. Yeah. What did that mean? So I w- went in with a chip on my shoulder. But when I had that freshman year, bro, I was like, big leagues Mm -hmm. like i i I don't even really remember like how i used to think about stuff like Mm -hmm. grand big picture stuff bro i was like i mean you knew me like we like i wouldn't say i was a jock like but at the same time i kind of was i wasn't really like looking at people in the world and like i was just like how am i gonna get to the big leagues that's why i'm gonna be good in school because i know it's gonna help Mm -hmm. but that's all i cared about to hear that that was your approach going into school, yeah, maybe that's why you're the one in the big leagues and life took me in another direction. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because it was taking be. me down a... And obviously, obviously, when it got closer, you, you, you narrow your focus. But yeah, my focus was always open, man. I, and I honestly didn't even think... I was always... I'm always real with myself, too. I knew how small the percentage of the people that made it to the big leagues. Yeah. So my biggest thing, too, which my family kind of preached in my head, which I, I learned early and I wanted to promote as well, was I never wanted to be one-dimensional. Being one-dimensional is extremely bad because once that's taken away from you, you need another way to live Oh, you to, see it with athletes life. all the time. Exactly. These guys exactly. are stuck. So I have the ability, man. If, if Like I said, if baseball was taken away from me, I have so many lanes that I would be able to go in where I would be completely fine. Yeah. Where I could even say maybe my life would even take off further as far as my mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So. Yeah. Baseball, baseball just ended up being what it ended up being because of when when you start building and something and you see a direction. Obviously, you're gonna try and get there. Right. And I pursued it and I got there. But if I didn't get there, I would I would be doing big things, man, somewhere else for sure. <laughs> you know that that's honestly like that mindset. Hearing just it's like how you say it confidently. It's one of the things. It's like, bro, if you believe it. If you truly believe it, like when someone's saying something, you're like, I could, I feel like just being here next year, I could be like, uh, I don't, I don't know if he really believes what he's saying. When you do see someone who believes in what they're saying, it's it's kind of obvious. I feel like every successful dude that I've ever talked about with any of this stuff, the certainty in their mind that they were going to be here, in my opinion, is why they're here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. It only happens if you're certain, bro. Like you can't, your heart, Mm -hmm. if your heart is certain that you can do it, then you do it. That's just like the way, that's the way I see anyone who's successful. I think mentality, yeah, it's mentality, man. Bro, like mentality, mentality. like, I'm, yo, and I don't have, like, I feel like I really have like learned and figured a lot of things out, but actually practicing them, you know what I mean? And being in the moment and not losing your emotion. One, I, I'm like working to be that guy. As soon as something happens, I don't ever overreact. I'm still trying to be that guy too, man. I'm yeah. very reactive too, but very reactive. I've I've been a lot better with it, but I'm still I still have that chip on my shoulder where I yeah. still want to let people know. You know yeah. what I mean? I still want them to feel it, but it's hard, man. There's what do you of, think? Um, it's hard. So what do you? I guess segueing in, into that a little bit is like that chip on your shoulder that you talk about. Um, it feels like you're ch- like the fact that you've been so vocal about the chip on your shoulder and just like your brand kind of just there's nothing negative about it at all. But recently there's been people who have talked about throwing shade on something just because it's the, you're trying to shine it. And what I mean by that is like this is you have your own platform, you're building your own brand and it's completely foreign to the sport of baseball. Mm-hmm. Tell me who else has done it. Nobody. You have a brand, like, people know the name because they're incredible baseball players. Mm-hmm. I'd say the closest guy was Ken Griffey. Yeah. 
but what you're doing is just hasn't been done before so people there's friction because it's foreign but i feel like i just wanted you to touch on or say anything in a sense of like where does that rank in your mind as far as like are you like yo all right watch you know what i'm saying like are mm. you even moved by it at all or are you like is it like something almost you enjoy because it's just like more fuel to the fire you already have or is it is it a non-factor you're just past it like um no man it's, i think it's a combination i think yeah. it's a combination i think i think to get to the point where i was now i think all building it was more of a i need to prove all these people wrong yeah now they're still part of that in me for sure for sure but now it's more of I know the level that I can get to. I know the platform that I have. I need to prove myself right, like as far as getting to that level. Right. And to prove everyone around me that all the hard work and everything that they've done over the years, that it was worth it. Right. But don't get it wrong, man. I love proving people wrong. And like you said, I have a huge, there's a huge uh, disconnect with, with me and how I'm perceived because people get uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable for baseball. Bro, I'm uncomfortable. You're, you're, I, I said shiny. <laughs> Yeah. Because you're shiny, bro. Like, yeah. you're, you lose, you're on Twitter. Yeah. You win, you're on Twitter. Yeah. Something happens, you're on Twitter talking about it. They're used to people just giving, like, the cookie cutter, like, yeah, man. I'm not hey, generic. Yeah. and I think it's rubbing people the wrong way because if you feel a way, you say it. Yeah. I think nowadays, bro, with Twitter and, like, the people who really win, everyone's their own, you know, their own person. Yeah. But the people who really win are really being themselves. Mm -hmm. And you can tell. Like, sure. you can tell when someone's just... That's actually them running their, their Twitter one, too. Like, it's not like he's not, like, puffing his chest out too much. There's a lot of actual relatability in a sense. And I think those are the people that really win, the people that stay authentic. For somebody who's kind of done this branding thing kind of on my own mm -hmm. for a sense of what we've built, it's, bro, it's all about that. It's It's one of those things where... You have to be able. You have to be able to be yourself. If you can't yeah. be yourself, bro, you'll never actually be enjoying what you're doing. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you had to go back and be like, "Yo, you know what?" Like they were like, "Yo, you were advised or whatever." You just like, you know what? I'm done with this. Like, you shut your branding down. I was, man. I, that's 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 that happens more than you think. That's still happening to this day. Like people trying to shut my brand down. Mm -hmm. Um, or there was times when I was advised from from people to shut my Twitter down. You know what I mean? Because I thought that it was become a distraction. But I've been on Twitter since since Duke, so essentially oh eight oh nine, mm -hmm. and I've it's no one's touched it but myself. It's a Stone Age, bro. It's a st it's like they're in the Stone Age, dog. Yeah. Like these people are not forward thinking about not at it. all. When anyone asks me about the MLB, that's like I don't throw any shade at mm -hmm. it. It's just they're just not. It's just factually. They're people who stuck. haven't adapted. They haven't adapted with the times. Yeah, like I get this. I get the tone of baseball and the old fashioned American game, whatever, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I get it. But at the same time, bro, it's like, you can't, you can't expect people who play that sport to just carve their whole lives around what you think the game of baseball should be like. Exactly. Like this is your Twitter, bro. Like this is you as a person. You can do exactly. whatever you want. Exactly. I don't know. We don't have to be talking about so much serious shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what do you think about music in general right now? Do you, are you, I mean, I know you're a huge music guy. Like you, you're playing music all the time. I know you are. I know you were a bars guy. Like you used to love bars, and we both used to like that. Like yeah, more. I still like bars, man. We still like bars, but the, you know, like the hip hop climate's very different as well. I like it, man, to a degree. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like, think do you it's... find yourself like I gotta listen to some like old Drake or something? Oh, like, all the time, man. Yeah. All the time, like, old Drake, old J Cole. Yeah. There's, it's too flooded now with, with nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And when I mean nothing, I mean like mumble rap or mm -hmm. or. Well, I know what you're saying. Yeah, like, there's just so many. There's so many people kind of doing the same sonics. Exactly. It sounds very similar. And that gets old. Bars never get old. Yeah. You know what I mean? You go back and listen to Jay Z, like you said, whatever Drake, Nas. Um, bars never get old, man. Mm -hmm. And I think I think this is awesome. The sound right now. I think it's amazing. I think it will. I think we'll outgrow it soon. And I think at some point it will go back to bars. Mm -hmm. I think the people that can do a combination of both are, are the mm -hmm. best. I, I, I love music. I love music. I, and I can find an artist and find a song or a couple pieces from him that I love. Where do you find an artist? Just on Spotify? People putting you on shit? Yeah, Twitter, Spotify. Um, 
people put me on. So you listen on Spotify? That's, that's a lot of Spotify. You a lot of Spotify, yeah. Between p- playlists, just bopping around from radio. Do you still like, uh, do you listen to my shit still? Of course, dog. Be honest. Of course. Um, more of your honestly, more of your more of your vintage shit. Older shit. Yeah. Like what? Like I have all your all your old dominoes. Uh, yeah, no one heard that ever. I'm gonna go through it. Come on, let's see. <laughs> this guy uh, has the most unreleased Mike Stead songs I think of all time. Maybe not anymore because dude, and they've survived for the most part. They they have survived through like all the iOSs. You know what I mean? All the all the Apple updates. Well, what would you say your favorite Mike Stead song is ever? If you had to pick one, you have to pick one. Wow. And you don't get to think about it that long. So. As I go down, I'm starting to see like I was about to say one, and as I go down the list, I'm like, oh that one, and then I'm like, oh that one. Yeah. What would even not even picking a favorite one? What do, what would you say you've heard? You think you've just played the most these days, probably because you're on it. No, I, I don't. Do honestly, what if, with the songs I'm on, I don't play. Really? I don't. Um, you know what I play a lot is Frio lately, man. Shit's hard. It's a banger. It's a vibe. I play a lot of Frio. Bright side, banger. I love bright side too. Yeah. Play bright side a lot. Being a guy who's come out and played some shows, or even just been to our shows and seen the vibe. Um, what would you compare it to? Would you compare it to going out on the mound at all? Would you? I guess the feeling of it. Uh, way more nervous I got going out with the mic. See, I feel like people be like, what? Even, no way. Not even close. Let's talk, we're talking like 600 people in Tampa. Way more nervous. Like this guy pitches in front of 60,000 and with, yeah. with like a broken leg. Because it's uncomfortable. It's it's something new too, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, like you said, I'll run out there in front of 50,000. I feel like right at home, man. Well, you know what I believe? You know what I believe that means? Um, you're You're fulfilling your destiny. It's just like kind of part of who you are and why would you get nervous? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. We're, bro, that's what happened with music to me, bro. Yeah. You see our shows. I've never rehearsed one second ever. Like, yeah. that sounds lazy, but it's it's just <laughs> exactly who we are yeah, in a sense natural. where it's organic. I'm going to go out there and bullshit with the crowd. I'll probably be shithoused by the end of it saying, yeah. who knows what I'll be saying, but it's going to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like, if you were to try to put any regiment behind it, it'd just be whack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, 100%. And that, like you said, that that works for you. That's like unique to just you. But, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I, I feel like, okay, I remember being nervous when I pitched, like oh, even yeah. when, at Duke when I was having that year. Like you never really got to see me pitch like that, did no. you? No, 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 never. But I mean, I went fucking bonkers. Yeah. Like I just didn't nothing. It was one of those times. I'm sure you can relate to this. Actually, I'm gonna say it. Like, it didn't matter what pitch I threw. They just even if they hit a fucking rocket somewhere. Someone like was gonna catch someone it. was just gonna catch it, bro. <laughs> like it was yeah. going to somebody. Yeah. And like I'm gonna throw this slider in the dirt and you're gonna swing and miss at it. You yeah. know what I mean? And like you know it's coming. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had like really that I didn't throw as hard as you. You know this. I mean, for the people I threw in the low nineties. I was never a mid nineties guy and I was a closer. So you think mm. I just had a like a <laughs> I just you know what I mean, my slider was 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 just super, like for baseball people at home, it just was on the exact same plane as my fastball. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was identical the yeah. way I threw the ball. Yeah. So no one ever really could establish what was coming. Yeah. It was one of those things. And at that year, bro, like, I, can you relate in a sense where like, like sometimes 2 well, I was just like, I'm throwing like <laughs> 85 down the middle. Yeah. And like they would just ground out the second or something. I'd be like, do I get, yeah, <laughs> definitely get. Maybe not years. Well, not my year, my year at Duke. Yeah, my 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 junior year at Duke, man, was 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 nuts. I pitched ninety eight innings. I had like one hundred and thirty six punchies. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I went bonkers. You were a different pitcher, bro. You were a different pitcher. Completely different pitcher than yeah. I remember seeing like you four seam guy, slider guy. Yeah, you should punch everyone out. Good, yeah, which completely I different pitcher now. Yeah. Now you're just. Now it's just a just crash. Like a polished it's just art. pro. Like I don't even. Yeah. <laughs> like I know you're gonna have a decent line. I don't even like panic or worry anymore. I'm just like, all right. <laughs> yeah, I've evolved, man. I'm not that. Yeah, like you said, completely different guy. Completely it's different wild guy. Wow, to see, cause I I saw you the whole way. Yeah. You know what I mean? As a guy, I was injured the whole time you were there, pretty much. Like yeah. I had a terrible time coming back from the injury. Like, yeah, man, tough. it just wouldn't. Remember, like yeah. I was in there working my ass off. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm gonna be all right. <laughs> hey, uh, next inner squad, I'll be good. <laughs> 
<laughs> like I was throwing Dude, like was 84, tough. like yeah. with like the ball wasn't even like making it full steam. It was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy. And it was just wild. Like I, my arm um, didn't, it was like the arm didn't like, the actual whip that it had before, it didn't have any, my arm didn't hurt anymore. It just didn't have it the same whip. It just had no whip. It was yeah. like, so I felt like, you know, like, you know those kids that try out for the team, and you're just like, you see them play, throw one, you see them throw one, like they're just yeah. warming up, warming up out in the outfield, and you see, <laughs> you see them throw, <laughs> you see them throw once, and you're like, oh, that dude's a shit bug. Yeah. But you know what I mean, you know? Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel you you just see, like, it could, it could be on one knee. Like, you just see their arm action. And you're, like, <laughs> you're like, bro, we're good. You whisper your homie, you're like, <laughs> I don't even know what we were talking about. <laughs> uh, anyways. I recently like was fucked up at a party and I was in Hollywood and there's some kids um, that like played minor league baseball and were fans, you know, brought you up. We talked and I was just like, I was, yeah, I was pretty hammered. So it was like, I, they just got a funny version of me. You sound, you see me out in different places, you'll get all types of different versions of me. They're all real. It's just like, depends how I'm feeling. They catch me and, I, and they were just like, what do you think? What they were like asking what you what Marcus does like why do, why do they why do I think that Marcus is so successful like honestly that's what the question they asked and I was at a party mm -hmm. and I'm like I'm like bro are you are you serious like we why you actually want to talk about why I think what Marcus has that makes him successful I'm like bro you're thinking way too deep into it my biggest thing was that this is what I said to him I was just like anybody all my homies that that are crushing it or in the big leagues or doing, you know, having success, right? There's all one thing in common, bro. They're all on a vibe. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just like, oh, I'm a good baseball. Like, you have to be whatever your vibe is. And it's, this sounds like a little, like, L.A. where it's not. Like, I'm a huge believer in vibe. Like, whatever you have to do. And, like, Mike Trout probably has a whole different vibe than, than you do to, to get what to where you need to be to feel like, yo, I'm on top of the world. Like, no one's fucking with me and I feel like that's kind of the thing I like I would tell any athlete I want to know your input on it but like once I feel like what separates like the guys who are like yo think about it how many top pro prospects and all these guys remember all the guys that were ranked higher than us or whoever and you just yeah. kind of like surpassed him and kept going and proved everyone wrong you know what I mean how many of those guys just don't like what what happened to them I think for a lot of it the separator is like, who can really get on a vibe? Who can get in there? Who could like, with the willpower of like fighting and battling for positions with all these kids in the minor leagues? Yeah. Who can like really catch their vibe, not need the money or the fame yet, catch a vibe and get there? Like, I think you can't, you can't really have success at a high level without being on a vibe, I call it. You know what I mean? I want to ask like, for you, what, what is it? And I don't really want like the generic, generic like, what do you do? You know, what do you do to get in the mood to pitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is like, what are the things that kind of move you? And you're just like, obviously pitching a certain way and, 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 and you yeah. know, having results. Yeah, mine's a combination, man. Like, like you said, it's on a vibe, right? So I attribute my success, man, to like a process of everything that goes on in my life, right? Mm -hmm. So for instance, like I got my best friend with me everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I've, he's been my best friend since 09. And right. he's just has kind of naturally grown into a role of being kind of just like my day-to-day -day manager, but more so just having him there with me, man, mm -hmm. because he's been someone that I looked out for me and he makes me feel comfortable. I'm all about feeling comfortable, man. If I feel comfortable, I feel like I can- That's exactly- I can take off. That's exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Being I on feel, a vibe is, you know I'm what I mean? a comfort guy, man. Like, exactly. Yeah, if I feel comfortable, man, I feel like once, like if you see me get comfortable, that's when you should worry, because then mm -hmm. that's when I'm about to take off. Right. And everything that I do is to get comfortable. And when I say that, I mean literally everything I do. So, going out to eat before a game, you know what I mean. Going out to the club and listening to hip hop music on a certain day. Right. Like, um, going out to a certain spot to get pancakes. So you're, and eggs. you're like, I remember you being a routine guy, but you're still very much a routine guy. I honestly, I'm not in routine anymore. 
I just do things that make me happy, man, and things that are literally gonna put me in a good mood. You know what I mean? It's exactly. So honestly, that's exactly what I'm at. What I'm saying, yeah. like anyone who really get finds the success that they're yeah. looking for, it's because they found the, their vibe. They yeah. found that comfort zone. Like, yo, I'm I'm where I need to be. Yeah, I'm exactly who I want to be. Everything like, to put me in a good mood, man. That's that's literally everything I do now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everything. Um, like I said, from are you spending your are you spending a shit ton of money right now? Are you just fucking doing like? Are you just like you know I'm what? Spending a little bit right now. Yeah, uh, I went to Europe. Mm -hmm. I had never been to Europe. I have never experienced traveling. Shit looked abroad. incredible. Went for two weeks. It was unbelievable. But like I said, I don't, I don't worry about money in the sense like that, man. I I worry about experiences. I try to experience life with my people, with my friends, with my family. I work extremely hard. I promise mm -hmm. you. There's no one. Um, there's maybe a handful of guys, but I'm just being real. My work ethic on and off the field is probably second to none mm -hmm. when it comes to when it comes to that. So if I'm working as as hard as I am, I'm going to reap the benefits as well. So right. I know I know where I'm at and I know that I keep that level, too. I'll never let that work ethic die. Once mm -hmm. I let that die, man, I probably stop doing as many things. Everything has to be in coordinates. Right. So my work ethic is high. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm doing things. I'm living life. I'm always just trying to maximize too, right? I want to maximize my potential. I want to maximize, maximize. You're only you're only here for a short, very window, and I like feeling happy and doing cool things make me happy. So I want to maximize to do but cool that, things with my people. When you go do something cool and your homies are there, like there there really isn't a better feeling than, no. than that. Like I that's what no. like I got I got I got money guys who are like bro, you're spending like the fuck are you doing bro yeah. why you you can't be like these aren't your sons you know what i mean sometimes like with, but i'm like bro i don't want to do any of this shit without these guys yeah i don't, don't do anything alone I'm i don't the same way. i don't want to it's not the same like i, I want to obviously uh, with josie or something like I, obviously i go we go do our own thing but like anything that i feel like is a moment yeah what the like my people what, what are you gonna too. do like yo dad yeah. Shit was crazy. You should have been like, yeah. you can't. I don't even like. I feel bad when I t tell my parents like, they can't even relate to what I'm doing. My parents are the coolest fucking people ever. Yeah. Like they never tripped once about my whole anything. But like, I just want to like, get them out here and like just. I wish. I wish. It doesn't work this way. You know. What I mean. I had to get this old and go through this much shit to be like, yo. I wish they could have did this for themselves. Yeah. Like. I wish they left Rhode Island, but at the same time, like I don't because yeah. that's why I'm here and that's, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's kind of the way it is. It's kind of the way, it, like, <laughs> it's just the way life goes. And, and it sounds cliche as fuck, but it's not. Yeah. At the end of the day, like, that's why I, the, the whole, the whole comfort thing, like, if you can't find comfort in what you're doing, you're just not doing the right things. Mm -hmm. And then that's like what I'm trying to. And that's comfortable meaning like, not comfortable necessarily mindset more of doing things that make you happy and comfortable so that because when you're comfortable you become more productive like when you feel comfortable in a certain setting your production just rises that's why you see all these top companies such as google and that's why you see these top companies why their environment is why their environments and their offices are so compatible and why they're just you, you it's so natural. It is? it's a vibe yeah it's crazy but it's so true it's, a vibe. it's so true um but yeah, definitely search for once I feel comfortable, but not but my mindset is very uncomfortable in the sense of I've never I never feel like I belong in this in that sense. I'm always climbing. What do you because, mean? What do you mean? Meaning that meaning I never I never meaning just as far as like complacency, I feel I I'll never get comfortable in that sense. Mm. I'm searching for comfort on like the day to day to make me happy, to make me rise. But my but my mentality. Right. And my I want mindset. you to elaborate on that a little bit. Like, yeah. what do you mean? What What are the things that you are struggling with when you say like just getting when the comfort level of the day to day? What does that mean exactly? I mean, if you feel comfortable, obviously talking about it. But just like, what do you, I want to know? Jet more, jet, like more specifically, like, is it just being comfortable, not being a social awkward? You know what I mean? Like, what is it? Um. Yeah, man. Uh. Honestly, I, I I have a bit. I'm been better with it lately, but I have a problem. I have I get like anxiety when I do things alone. Yeah. So Ryan, my best friend, he's with me everywhere, and that's a big thing. That's why people don't realize that's like invaluable to me. You know what I mean? You can't put a price on that. That's what people don't realize. Me, I don't want to go out and eat dinner by myself. Like yeah. that's awkward for me. Like that's that's very uncomfortable. 
You know what I mean? I don't want to go even after games. Like, so I don't want to walk home would, after games. Would you games say that myself. if you weren't Marcus Stroman and you were, um, you were Marcus Stroman and had like the the deli up the street? Would you do you think it would be the same? Do you think it's just like kind of an anxiety thing, or is it because you are who you are and you don't want to do that by yourself now? I think it's. Uh that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think it's part of where I'm at. Can right you now. think back to Duke, being like, "Yo, I don't want to go eat by myself." Yeah, I never wanted to eat by myself. I always used to have friends. I always. I'm used the to same want to, way. Yeah. Weird. Now that you say that, it's I'm, I'm the same. Recently, I like literally over the past like month, I've been doing stuff on my own. Like I've been traveling on my own. I've literally. You're growing a little bit, you know. Yeah, I feel like I'm maturing. I feel like it feels refreshing. You know what I mean? Because I've never done it, and I feel really uncomfortable. So. After I did it a couple of times, I'm starting to find it as as almost something that's making me build, something that's making me better as a person. You know what I mean? Not necessarily that I want to do it or I have to go to it all the time because I still want my I still want my vibe where I'm chilling with Ryan and we're making moves just because that's my comfort level and that's how I get it. I, I operate. But I now I know now that I can go and do something by myself and, and be mm-hmm. good about it. Yeah. And that gives me better hot like better mentality knowing that i have that yeah it's just it's just something yeah. less so another thing you don't have to exactly. necessarily worry about exactly yeah that's interesting i i bet no one in the whole anyone watching or listening would have ever guessed that no because i'm very because i'm very, very outgoing. outgoing i'm very outgoing yeah. and i love people i love people interaction but you can even ask ryan if i if i get swarmed by am I, if i'm alone and i get swarmed by people or if i'm something I get very. I feel that. I get very anxious and very scared, man. Or even if I had to literally, sometimes there's times when Ryan's like outside the city where he's not even there, and I had to literally go and walk to like the shoppers and like go pick up just like some groceries. Mm-hmm. Like that gives me anxiety. Wow. You know what I mean? Now, is it, do you think like something bad's gonna happen, or are you just like, you know what? I just don't like being alone. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of. I don't like feel don't comfortable want, if I'm alone. You like, don't want to get like people cruising up on you and like a little bit of that mixed with a little bit of I always like having someone there to talk to or like bounce ideas off of or just like Yeah. When I'm alone, I feel like I don't have that. You know what I mean? Some people could like put headphones on and like that's what they go to, but I like to having someone there. I do that. I totally say something. Agree. If I want to say something, I need to like say it. Yeah, I totally I agree. Say it to, you know what I mean? If like there's no one there. And I just mean like it could be anything. It could be something stupid. I'm not even saying like I need to like speak facts like if I have an idea on the top of my head or like something pops up and I'm or just you like, walk by, you want to say something about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fucking whoever, exactly, you know, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's why it's always better, man. It's always better when you company. Crazy. That's that's I mean, you're talking to somebody who's you obviously know. I just yeah. I can't relate more. It's like I, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't even know if I'd be having real fun if they weren't here the whole time. I don't, I don't know if I'd be having like any of the shit that we've done. I wouldn't. Like, I, I can't really myself. imagine, like, being an artist and being like, hey, here's my tour manager, here's, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, here, yeah, like, you know what I mean? I have this, like, condo in the hills by myself. Like, yeah. what? No. Keep your people around, yeah. bro, for sure. We were we were talking about it earlier, but you want to make your own music. Um, we are making some already. How serious, um, like, how do you see it playing out in your head if it were to be ideal? What do you, you know what I mean? Like, what do you make of the whole music? Are you just doing it just to fulfill because you want to make music? Or is it because, like, you want to be, you want to be, like, somebody people buy tickets to and go watch that show? Honestly, I would do music just because I love music, man. I would love music. I have a message that I want to get out there. And then, yeah, I would love to be out there, but not necessarily... Like like monetize. I, I, yeah, I don't need to monetize that all off of it, man. I love the atmosphere of being on a stage. But knowing you, you'd monetize it if you could. And then once you got a little taste of some monetization yeah, on that man. side, which you will, you're like a, you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, that's so what I'm saying. Like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta a, build, man. You gotta up, build. Let's drop a tour, you know? Hey, you're on you have a small window. You have to capitalize. Marcus, think about a Marcus Stroman tour in Toronto with off an EP. Yeah, I need it. You know what I mean? Like, so many motherfuckers are going to come to those shows, bro. Like, your shows will be popping. I agree. Because they're going to be like, wait, fucking Marcus Stroman? We're gonna Music go, coming soon. We're going we're gonna to get to go see him with a thousand people in a room, Yeah, which is crazy. a great show. I agree. I've been working for six years, and most of my shows are a thousand. 
Yeah. You know, so like you're just starting like that. It's easy. They're all fanboy. They all love you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just telling this is probably a moment in time and <laughs> save this Kilmer because I'm calling the shot, but like you'll you'll have a sold out Canadian tour. You drop an EP. If you drop an EP in the beginning of a season, you go ball out that season, right? Mm -hmm. The fucking records playing all over Toronto. Everyone's listening to that shit, going to the games. Haha. <laughs> you know what I mean? Listening to Marcus, about to see a pitch, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's all brand new shit. That's never happened in the sport. Yeah, it's next level. Then man. the season ends after you fucking do whatever you do. And oh, hey, guys, you know what? I'm going to go on a fucking. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's a layup, bro. This is sure. monetization 101, bro. Get yeah. you the right merch. You have HDMH, obviously. Yeah. It's actually probably a good time to talk about something else right now. <laughs> um, but like the just the monetization that I see being a guy who looks at that shit, yeah. it's just an untapped market. Yeah. We just talked about it downstairs. You want to be at a point well, where... Uh, yeah, coming soon. Yeah, you want to be at a point <laughs> where you're not spending any of your fucking baseball money. Imagine that, you know what I mean? Like I got homies, hopefully they'll be in this chair one day, you know, talking about this type of stuff. But I got homies that are like, yeah, bro, I'm not even using my, I'm not spending my athlete money. It's a business plan of mine, you know? And yeah. I'm like, that's fucking genius. Yeah. You're going to be a guy that's going to be able to do that. Well, I'm, I'm almost at that point. That's what people don't realize. Like I network, man. Like I'm out there. I love obviously Canada. I love the city of Toronto. Shout out Cargo Jet. Shout out, <laughs> shout out, <laughs> like whoever I'm else. There, man. I'm, I'm out there in the city, and I'm, I'm monetizing my whatever I'm doing now off the field as well too. So a lot of the things that I'm doing, like you said, is coming from deals that I have with partners, on and off the field, and that's important. That's important. That's how I'm able to go enjoy and do things with my family, and not even worry about the expense. You know what I mean? And that's a uh, that's part of all the work that went into my 26 years of life, you know what I mean? To be able to garnish all of that up, to be able to get a deal from a company for this, and then be able to throw that right back to my family exactly. on a trip, on a plane. It's what like, make it, like, ima imagine like the 20, you told like the 16 year old you, you started, you got your first job. What was your first job? Did you ever have one? Never had a job. Me either. And that sounds, let's, people, I deal with this all the time, I'll, they'll be like, no, no, oh, no, you're a rich, yeah. like, you a no. Duke boy. I'm like, bro. My dad, my was dad, my me. dad and mom <laughs> still are working the same job they've had for. Same. They're they're still in a house that's the size of my bar. I still live at home. Uh, yeah. Studio area. Same. And you know what I'm saying? Like, we can't like, it's just not what it is. But at the same time, as you're a baseball player, and if it is what you're pursuing as your meal ticket, yeah, your parents don't assume they don't even try to make you have a job because you're yeah. going to school and you're. You know, like you have to be that tier of baseball player to be like, oh, wait, I'm going to get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Like, then that's kind of what my, yeah. I'm sure your parents said the same thing, but yeah. we had so many games. We're playing baseball, basketball, practicing. Exactly. There was no time. I didn't have time. My my dad was killing. If I wasn't at a game or train or he wasn't working me out, he was giving me additional schoolwork. Big Earl. What, what, all right. Hey, my so walk me. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, wait. I'm telling you. Drop, drop, like, bring me through this process. Big Earl, does he. Dude, like draw up some assignments. Is he that? Is he like? He would, you know, what we would do. He would, he would go through articles, like newspaper articles. He would write down questions. What an unbelievable guy! And I, I would have to go and read the articles. It was like I would never read, let like. I, it was reading comprehension. I, I can't even imagine if my parents were to do that. Yeah. Because they never did. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe I would have just been like, all right, <laughs> you know, like at yeah. that point. Dude, my dad was crazy. It was, it was, it was not fun, man. It was not fun, but I thank him for it to this day. You know what I mean? Wow. So uh, you're like really like one of those like, like that's that's really like the, your truth like this the basically like you grinded your ass off, and you now you're just looking at back at it like oh that was the like you know what this it. was this was the guidance I needed to get to my end goal like that's what yeah and that's why I mean when I keep life in perspective man because I realized how much I worked from a very very young age yeah. and how much people did not work mm -hmm. and now those people that did not work are the loudest ones that comment on well, my Well, they're the work. ones trying to tell you what you're doing wrong. Yeah, that's why I, that's why I could care less. That's why I'm so at a point now in my life where I, I, I'm so comfortable in that sense where I don't have to prove to those people anymore. It's so funny you say that because you know what I, mean? it's that, I remember, 
I remember, all right, so I'm a baseball player. I was like the best ever, like one of the best ever from Rhode Island when I left Duke and then I had that year all American. You know, it was, it was one of those times where I, at that point, I'm like, yo, I'm the fucking man. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't a douche about it. I was a little douchey, I think. Wasn't I a little bit? Sometimes like I could be, you Happy, know what I mean? Confident, same. Yeah, but we were douchey sometimes. But either way, <laughs> we grew out of it. <laughs> but um, I remember so being in being in a, you know, I'm the guy like, oh, he he has a chance of being a big leaguer from Rhode Island. Like everyone's watching at home. When I go home, I feel like I'm the man, even though yeah. that's in my little bubble. Like I probably wasn't. I was probably like a little shit bum. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, bro, I remember like we talk about that kind of like insecurity around like because you know everyone's like doubting you and like everyone's like has an, some negative like even like the stuff when they're saying nice things it's like they don't even mean it when i was came back and i was like a white rapper bro mm -hmm. it was one of those things where we were getting in fights all the time because people were just i'd be out at the bar like just being a normal like just you know i had some songs out some people liked them some, some people, people didn't did. yeah you know what I mean? But like in Rhode Island, it was so it was so local at that time. Like really, the only people that cared about it was Rhode Island and like baseball players yeah. a little bit. Yeah. You know. So I remember that feeling like for a while. I was just like kind of had this chip on my shoulder and be like, yo, I can't wait to prove those people wrong. Mm -hmm. That was like my main motivation for a while. Because yeah. I didn't even look at music like, you know how music started, bro. Like yeah. it was a long shot. Like it was it wasn't like yo, I'm a rapper now. Like. No, no, no. So I remember that was like what got me to, without those people, bro, without like that whole vibe of like everyone at home kind of laughing yeah, when like I, stage. they were like laughing when I walk out of the room for yeah. a while. And I knew that. Yeah. And like, I swear to God, it was one of those things that like really pushed me to actually be like, I might not even be a musician because mm -hmm. I was so half ass about it when I started. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, because of those people, you know, I was like, fuck these people, man. I could do this shit. Yeah. And then I went and did it, and we got to that point that, that well, you know, you be, you basically just said like you get to that point, and it feels amazing when you're just like I'm at a point in my life where like I did this shit, bro. Like I'm, I, I, you know what I mean? Like I, in my world and like my goals and my heart, like I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Exactly. That's all that really matters. The proof is in the pudding. Like the tour, you know what I mean? Like you can't make this up. So you get to a point where you statistically you're just. You know, like you obviously feel like you have so much more to prove, but you're proven. You're a mm -hmm. proven big leaguer. You yeah. know what I mean? At this point, there's a lot more you want to prove. So do I. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's. We talked about it earlier, but like, think about what the concept of closer was. You did a whole like closer campaign thing. Like, you never get there. Mm -hmm. No matter what your goals are, when you get there, it's not what you thought it was going to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's going to be something more. There's going to be something else that's moving you. Always. I feel like when you stay still, you're done. You're dead. Like, there's a lot of people alive that are dead. No, man, I'm always moving. Yeah, you got to make moves, man. I'm always moving. That's why, I, <clears throat> even like in my off season, man, I, I feel like a lot of athletes essentially go home and just yeah, making, stay very stagnant. I'm, I'm experiencing life. You know what I mean? I'm meeting new people. I'm creating connections with people. I'm meeting brands. Like, I'm doing a lot. Right. But it's all things that are helping build me as a person, things that are helping my family, things that are going to, set me up down the road right if you have if you have anything uh to the young baseball player if you had one piece of information or one piece of like something they should take with them on their journey not even through their career because it might end very soon just through their life you know what i mean like i think a lot of people look at look at you and be like hey like this dude's mindset i want that mindset mm -hmm. you know what i mean and tricking your mind to believe in something it doesn't really <clears throat> believe is hard yeah you're someone who believes in what you're saying you could see it so i guess whatever you feel like if you could give you got to give every kid in the world who's, who's interested and wants to know like what do you think can help them the most that that's really helped you get to where you you know where you are honestly the biggest thing for me it's, it's it can be cliche too but i've always no matter what i've always remained myself and this world, man, it's easy to change. And I think most people do change. Mm -hmm. I think most people change early. And I don't mean change as evolved. I mean literally change who you are as a person. Right. Um, what you care about. Exactly. What you do. Change who you are as a person because that's how society is trying to make you. Right. You know what I mean? I've never done that. I've never done that. I've been authentic from the very beginning, man. And I think by doing so, 
I think that's what uh, the main reason why I'm at where I'm at. You I know, know why we're best friends. I yeah, because I, because I, dude, I. There's kids who, if you have any piece of advice, I say, I literally say, yeah. yo, like they're artists and they're struggling getting people to listen. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, yo, you have to be yourself. Yeah. When I mean be yourself, when they meet you, they have to be like, oh, this is the guy singing that song. And I believe yeah. that. Like, I believe that dude, I yep. believe he means what he's singing. Exactly. I believe that's happening. And that's the only way as an artist, it even applies more to the artist world than ever. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, but what you just just happens to be what your one piece of advice would be, and I've never asked that, but yeah. it really is, bro. Like at the core of it, I've thought about this a lot. At the core of it, nothing matters if you're not happy. Exactly. You can have everything, bro. You see it. Like I see it in LA so much, bro. Like you can have everything you possibly could ever want. Like the money some of these dudes got, and they just can't be happy because they know at some way, some spot along the way, they lost. A lot of the shit that mattered to them. Yep. And now they might not even be able to tell you what exactly they were because they've changed so much since mm -hmm. that time. But these dudes lost parts of themselves along the way and then they get there and there's not really enough left to feel it. 100%. You know what I'm saying? So like a lot of my decisions, my business decisions are influenced by that, bro. I don't, I don't, I won't ever do a record deal because yeah. I don't, I just want to be happy. Like I think that's one thing people don't talk about with athletes really at all is mental health. It's kind of like you're supposed to be able to handle if they criticize you because you get paid so much money. Like it's tough, man. Bro, I'm trying to understand what the most what most athletes like, just how athlete. No one ever really understands the athlete's perspective. I know Players Tribune is a thing now, I and mean, that's cool because people are starting to see their side. But really, it's like it's always been like you guys are the workers, man. Like yeah. we're gonna. You get paid so much, you could take all this shit we're gonna talk because you get paid so much. Yeah. And it's just not the way it is, bro. You guys are human human beings, you know what I mean? Sure. And it's the same for entertainers, obviously. But that was good. This was perfect. We talked for long. You never know, Jack. But um, yeah, that's it. We don't even need to sign off. Thank you guys and uh, have a Merry Christmas. Yeah.